rise and we join together in worship and praise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We follow the order of divine service setting three, and you can find it on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be seated for the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. We pray together the collect for the day, found printed on page two inside of your worship bulletin. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord comes from Exodus chapter 24. This will serve the basis for our meditation together this morning. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out in the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from 2 Peter chapter 1. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, 
and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Having heard God's word, we now joyfully join together, making bold confession of our faith in that triune God by speaking together the words of the Nicene Creed. You can find those words printed for you on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for hymn 415.
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, God's grace, his mercy, and peace be yours from our almighty God, our all-loving God, our heavenly Father, his one and only Son, our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God grant us his Holy Spirit to come upon us, to strengthen us in that faith, to keep that faith within us now and until life everlasting. Amen. The words of our text, as I stated earlier, from the Old Testament lesson for this, the celebration, uh, the transfiguration of our Lord, from Exodus chapter 24, as I was read for you earlier. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, that phrase, I saw God, or that these elders and Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu saw God, I don't know if it means that much to you, but to me it's very impressive. I mean, the whole idea, I I try to imagine it. And this is not the first time for Moses, really, because, you know, he saw God way beforehand when he saw the burning bush and he went up there. Very impressive to me. And yet, it was very fearful, it's described. So I tried to come up with an example for you similar into my situation. And I know I've shared this with you, but... I'm nobody. I'm really nobody, and I don't know people, and I'm not into movies or television. So if I saw somebody famous, it wouldn't impress me because I wouldn't even know if I saw them, to tell you the truth. And all the people I know that are famous are all dead. So that, that's it, and I, I just can't use that. So I'm going to use somebody that was very impressive for me that's famous that most of you probably don't know. It's a sports figure. He graduated from the University of Michigan. (laughs) But if you were into sports back in the 1970s and the 1980s and sports commentator in the the 80s and into the 90s, really, um, for ABC, Dan Deardoff. Oh, good. Some of you know him. Good. Because I'm sitting here going, okay, as time goes on, this is going to get less. But I like telling this story. Now, here's my connection with Dan Deardoff. All right? And it's going to be like, I saw God. But he's not a God, of course. He wasn't. He was, I mean, he made the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So he's, he did all right. He played for the St. Louis Cardinals. And here's my connection. I have a had a friend at seminary in St. Louis, Missouri who knew Dan Deardoff and invited me and Susie to Dan Deardoff's house where Dan Deardoff was in Miami broadcasting a game. But we were in his house. We were in his hot tub. I put on that helmet. That's why my head's so close to my shoulders now. Because those things are heavy. The St. Louis Cardinal helmet I got to put on. Didn't ask for permission because Dan Deardoff and I are like this. That's my claim. But the best part of this is that I know a friend who knew Dan Deardoff, who invited us over to his house so we could be in the hot tub and help babysit Dan Deardoff's little girl who threw up on my wife. Now, that's something to brag about. That's as close as I can get to anybody famous that I know of. Um, And, you know, but we like these kinds of stories, don't we? I mean... All right, it's not that impressive. Maybe it is. Maybe you're, maybe it's, if it's that impressive to you, come see me. I'll give you my autograph and put Dan Deardoff's daughter threw up on my wife. Yeah, anyway, that's about it. That's as far as I can get and as far as I can go. And if I sat in a plane next to somebody famous, I have no clue because I put on my noise reduction uh, headphones and I kind of mind my own business. And if I'm watching a comedy, then the whole plane hears me. shows and concerts where I saw, and that's 
better than I guess seeing it on television, maybe? I don't know. But here's the thing I do know. To be able to say, not only did I see, but I got close to, I touched, you know, that, that's scary for Steve, <laughs> but for everybody else, you know, that, that gets to be very impressive. To be able to make a connection who's, with somebody who's made a name for themselves and the people of Israel sent their elders and Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu up on a mountain to be able to see God and to receive the laws and the commands that he had. And it's really interesting in the book of Exodus. It's really interesting. Um, and I urge you, when you look at the book of Exodus and study this, don't gloss over those laws that are in there. They're important. That's why it's written down. But also, this is all connected with what's called the Ten Commandments. There are other laws and, and rituals and things like that that are in there. And when you get to the end of this whole section, when you get into chapter 31 through 34, it, by the end of that, it's going to say that Moses got his autograph. Okay? Now, I didn't get Dan Deirdre's autograph, but I could have. But that would have been stealing, and I was going to be ordained soon <laughs> after that. So I just thought, no, I won't do that. Um, but here's what it literally says in Exodus. God wrote these words, these laws, with his finger and cut them into the stone. That's an autograph. That is impressive. And these words of God, this law of God, you know, the ones that we kind of gloss over and we'll make up excuses, doesn't apply to us. And I said it a couple of weeks ago, how about my Sunday school teacher said, and one of you said so adeptly, you know, so there's only nine commandments now. And yeah, I mean, but no, there's more than 600 of these laws that get inscribed with the handwriting of God, the finger of God, cut into these stones. And in our text, the midst of all seeing God is dealing with a cloud. And it's no wonder, because we describe our experiences with somebody that we consider to be a star, a well-renowned, you know, a graduate of Michigan who plays for the Cardinals, who, grads, who goes to the Football Hall of Fame, all of those kinds of things, as impressive, not as impressive as some of the modern ones maybe, but those are going to go away as well. But these people were excited because they saw God, and a cloud enveloped them for six days. And on the seventh day, Moses goes up and sees God face to face. And he's there for 40 days and 40 nights. What a huge significance to be able not only to see him and get his autograph at the end of this, but to be able to see him with his own eyes. We wish for that. We wish for those kinds of experiences that make that kind of an impression upon us. Some of you will know that I am, uh, I'm going to use the word in a very solemn way, a fan of World War II. Um, I am amazed how World War II came about, how it happened, and all of that. And I have studied it ever since I was a young boy in high school when my English teacher made me do a composition. You know, you had to write a paper. I don't even remember how long it was, but it seemed forever. It was probably three pages. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, was, it was so long that I had to learn how to footnote and everything, and I looked up in the library. This was my freshman year of high school, and I found a, I didn't know what I was going to write on, and all of a sudden in the library, I saw a lot of books about World War II. I said, good. I, I can't say, I'm going to be able to come up with three pages uh, for that. And I checked out all these books on World War II. But it worked because 
I really fell, fell in love with the whole subject and topic. Once again, I use those words in a very solemn way because how can you love the atrocities that happen? So I learned all the dates and history, and I, I just really enjoyed learning about it because I was amazed that one person, one person, one, could affect and transform the entire world. Negatively, but then ultimately positively. Adolf Hitler and doing all of that in the concentration camps. So being able to read and study that and see the pictures, and as time would go on, I would continue to study and read, and I would see the videos. And what I'm getting to is the very, very first time I was in Poland. Um, <coughs> we were going to do an English camp in Katowice. And in Katowice, we flew into Krakow, and we were taken to Auschwitz. Auschwitz. The thing that I saw so many times, the sign that said, Arbeit macht frei, you know, work will set you free, will make you free. Um, and to walk under that, all of a sudden when we got there, the moment I saw that famous sign and walked under it, there was this awesomeness that just you knew you were in hallowed ground, if I dare use those words. I mean, uh, the worst atrocities that ever happened were here in this place. And to be able to walk in there and to be able to go through the barracks and to be able to put your fingers in the bullet holes where many Jews and other prisoners of war were shot down right there at the bottom. To walk through and see the actual hair of the, of the prisoners and their shoes and their belongings and it's stored there. They kept it there as a memorial and are remembered so that this event would never get repeated. To walk into another building which looked like a shower but they didn't work where the gas would come in Thousands and thousands of people were killed right there with a furnace there and a track where they were put the dead bodies in there. And they couldn't even burn those bodies fast enough as they were killing them in the showers. And the stories will go on and on. And the reason I tell you this is because there's something about going there and seeing that where your feet are walking, where that history took place. And it's awful. It's the worst atrocity you could probably read about. And to be able to see that and to be a part of that and surrounded by all of that history and memory really cuts you. And you see it. And you can say that you've seen it. There's a solemnness that comes in a weightiness, a heaviness. Because you know that where you're at, something very important happened. And in this case, on the negative side, and so serious that it should never be repeated. And I'm telling you this because in the middle of our text, there's a word in Hebrew. I, I don't like to give foreign words, but I'm going to give you this one because I think you might like the word. Kibbutz, K-A-B-O-D, Kibbutz. And <clears throat> it's the Hebrew word for, that gets translated here in our text, all right? And it says that the glory of the Lord surrounds. Glory, Kibbutz. But it's not what you think of as glory. It's the weightiness. It's the, I'm in an important place and I'm surrounded by something so important that I've got to be a part of it. I've got to witness it. I never, ever, ever want to forget. As negative of an experience, and yet it got to be a positive one for me there in, in Auschwitz and Birkenau, to be able to take that and turn it into something that I pray we never repeat incidents like that ever again. 
It's on the positive side. It is so awesome. It's kind of like being in Van Buren's house, but better. <laughs> Obviously, way better. To be surrounded by the weightiness and the importance of God himself. And you see it. You can feel it. It's palpable. That's the kabod that's mentioned here with the glory of the Lord that surrounded these 70 elders and Moses going up and seeing God. It's awesome. In a very loving, positive way to be able to come and say with the tablets of stone in his arms, I saw God. I saw and felt the glory of of God. My friends, we're here to say, what do you think we're here for but to be able to have the kavod, the weight, the awesome importance of God himself with us. We see God. We experience his presence with us. And we need it. Just like Moses and Aaron and Ehu and Nadab, they needed God's presence. They've been wandering in the wilderness and they're going to continue to wander after this situation. <coughs> and they're going to hear a lot of grumbling and complaining. And it will not stop. And my interpretation of the grumbling and complaining is there's probably a few petitions that were signed to try to convince Moses that what he's doing, he doesn't know what he's doing, this is taking way too long. And, I'm not sure, but I'll bet you a poll or two were taken as well. <laughs> and popular opinion says, you know, 95% of the people say, we're going this way. You see Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, the 70 elders, they needed to see God in all of his kabod. His glory is translated. That weighty, heavy, real presence. The significant presence God, because you're going to hear and it won't stop. We need it. Here as we end our season and start to begin into the Lenten season just this Wednesday, we need the cabal. We need the glory of God. We need to see God, especially as we enter this Lenten journey. And on some days, it's going to be our Lenten journey that we're going to go on. But we need for us to have him there. We need this encouragement because we're going to hear the polls and the surveys. I saw God. In his word and his sacrament, I see God. Especially in my recovery and everything, I cannot wait to see you more than ever. I see God in your faces and in your actions in your lives. I see how God works within you and that faith that inspires you and lifts you up. I see God <coughs> as you love and forgive one another consistently and constantly. And I'm not all the struggles and the challenges that face you, I see God as you continue to come here to be fed and nourished amidst all the problems and all the difficulties. To be able to see God has not left you nor forsaken you. Kaboom. The glory of God. We are enveloped by it like a cloud. And he continues to lift us up. And he continues to strengthen us. My dear friends, we see God today. 
And it's our transfiguration. It changes us for now and for all eternity. And we thank you. And we praise him. Because that very God did indeed come to suffer, to die, and rise again. Not by any work or merit on your part. He took away all of your sin for all of me. You have that forgiveness. You have that life. And now you have that glory. It's a glory. And you see it. Thanks be to God in Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may that amazing grace of God and the peace that we draw from it. Let it keep your hearts, your minds, and lives in him now and until life everlasting. Amen. It is with thanksgiving in our hearts that we lovingly, trustingly, and joyfully offer back to him the first fruit offerings of our hearts as well as of our hands.
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. O Lord, we give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O Lord, from thee. Heavenly Father, you revealed your glory in the transfiguration of your Son, who tabernacled among us in the flesh. Open our eyes that by faith we would see him continuing to tabernacle among us in the divine service. Grant that we would heed your admonition to listen to him as he forgives and preserves us at the font, the pulpit, and altar. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we ask for your blessing on this congregation and especially for those who are going through catechism classes. As Moses was changed when he saw your glory on Mount Sinai, may we who have beheld your glory in the face of Christ also be transformed and given boldness of spirit to share your glory abroad. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless the families of your church, that parents will teach the faith to their children, and that the forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in all households. Remember also all expectant mothers, that they and their babies would be kept safe and healthy throughout their pregnancies. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority on earth. Bless those who are entrusted with authority both here and abroad to serve with integrity and honor for the well-being of all. Grant that all division, conflict, and strife would give way to unity, peace, and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of all comfort, you alone bring the peace that passes understanding to troubled hearts. Remember the afflicted who ask for prayers on their behalf. Kim Dahm, Joanne Walsh, Justin Miller, Phyllis Todd, Susan Utek, Sarah Hansen, be with Beth, Ken Todd, Kimberly Christensen, Pastor Jeff Walsh, Howie Holenry, Joan Brun, Roxanne Dahm, Matt Legrand, Josh Legrand, be with Bonnie Snyder, Pastor Jerry Brun, Debbie Langenberg, Bob Gruber, Will Wittenborg, John Murray, and Jennifer Bean, be with Titus Dedeker, Ruth Cornell, George Adam, Brad Weston, Pat Eilders, Susie Aw, Blair Penfield, be with Wanda Grom, Arlene Veen, Sarah Anderson, Mike Wright, Rob Ree, Arla Loy Larson, be with Nathan Chester, Sherry Peterson, Ken Hoffman, and Doreen White. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are shut in, especially Shirley Patrick, Teresa Santee, Jane Winter, Bob Jager, Lois Wendt, Florence Knopp, Doris Beckman, Rose Johnson, Lois Lackor, Kay Nelson, Annette Paws. Lord, we pray that you continue to guide them and keep them in your care and grace and help them to know that your presence is always with them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, defend your church here on earth, especially the pastors and people who faithfully gather together at Jesus, our Savior Lutheran Church in Winnebago, Nebraska, at Trinity Lutheran Church in Hampton, Iowa, at Peace Lutheran Church in Harlan, Iowa, at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Hartley, Iowa. Be with the entire Northwest District of our own Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Guide and bless the faculty, the staff and students at Concordia University in Seward, Nebraska. Send your Holy Spirit upon our brothers and sisters at the Bethel Baptist Church in Sioux City, Iowa, and St. Michael's Catholic Church here in South Sioux City, Nebraska. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we praise you, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Give us ears to hear your voice speaking through your word. Holy lips to receive Jesus' very blessed sacrament with repentance and faith. And Lord, we pray that you grant us your glory through these means of grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We rise and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper when he had given thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord now bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Thank you.